Yeah, you are. Good. Well, if we did, we did. If we didn't, we didn't. Um, so what we're looking at here is um, Jessica's wiki. Um, and on the left is Jessica's version, and on the right is James's version. So the one on the left we can play with, the one on the right we can make changes to and save it and share it with everybody else. So, um, so click on um, the, uh, the one I wanted to start with. Let's just start at the top with Albany Devils. Okay. okay. And so, so that looks like... Um, and let's edit the source code of this. Well, you want me to go into the fire? Well, let's just look at it. It doesn't. You can make this full screen for now, but we're, we're just, we just want to be able to mess with it. Yep. Um, so Jessica's. I don't know how you get that code in there. That's that's pretty cool. That one, two, three. I like that. Do you know how to do that? Um, I'm not sure. Somebody else did that. I can't remember who, but I think that's cool. So. Jessica, if you ever tell us how to do that, that's cool. Maybe if you click on wiki text, it will change it. Guess not. <laughs> I don't know what that does. That opened a new window and I don't know where that took you. Okay, you're on third tab there. Utica Comments. Yes, I gotta get to it because the- Stupid, stupid. Are blocking. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, and so, what Jessica's doing is she's uh, she set a background color for the tiddler, I think. Um, she dragged in an image, and she's in line one there. In line two, she's starting to write with tags, okay? Um, when you write the way that she's doing, the Albany Devils, now click on Albany Devils in the text of that. That should take you to all of the other tiddlers that are tagged with Albany Devils. Okay, you can make this full screen so that we've got a bit more to work with. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, you want to click on Albany Devils again. Yeah, yep, that's good. Okay, and you can close her menu bar. Okay, so, and then she's got professional ice hockey team. So she's using ice hockey as a tag in the American Hockey League. And so she's using American Hockey League there as a link. Yep. Okay. Um, and... But let me correct myself because I've been on this little kick. So scroll up. So in my mind, because even though she Jessica wrote the word tag, this is not the act of tagging. When she wrote as an author, she was engaged in the act of linking. And there's two ways that she could link, and she illustrates both of them here. One is to link inside a double angle brackets with the word tag. And what that does, as James just demonstrated, is provides a link to the tiddler called Albany Devils, which is this one, plus all the other tiddlers that are tagged with it. Okay? And she's, a second way that she made a link was she enclosed the name of the tiddler inside of double square brackets. Um, so those are two different ways of linking. So let's look at what she did in terms of tagging. And so you can um, close, you can stop editing the tiddler, and we'll just look at the contents of it. Um, and so she tagged it with Albany Devils. Tagging a tiddler to itself is, um, allows you to do that, but it's, but it's, it's confusing. So we, 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 you should be careful about tagging a tiddler to itself. You should do it for a particular reason. Um, are there any other, she's tagged it to American Hockey League, and so, I'm wondering why, as a writer, she chose not to provide navigation with the word tag. Maybe it was just to, to demonstrate different things. Same with, let's look at Eastern Conference. Okay. Um, that looks the same as American Hockey League, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, let's look at ice hockey. I'm seeing that all these things are tagged to the same things. That's what it looks like. And New Jersey Devils. So I don't quite understand what we're seeing here, <laughs> to be honest. Um, the Albany Devils play hockey. Yep. 
They're opponent. They probably are a subfield of a uh, sub team of the New Jersey Devils. They're a farm team of the New Jersey Devils. Right. They probably play in the Eastern Conference in the AHL, and their name is yeah. So I think what we've got, and seeing how New Jersey Devils and Albany Ta- Devils are tagged to each other, so yeah. click Albany Devils there. Oh no, we're right there. Click New Jersey Devils. Sorry. Um, scroll down. Let's see. Look at New Jersey Devils. Oops. Um. And they're not tagged with, they're just used as a tag. Okay, so I'm a little confused by exactly what we're supposed to be doing, but I think what we see, and when I looked at this before, I had a different plan of attack in a sense. Um, but I'm not sure what we have here. Um, so this is, which one, which Tiddler is this? This is... Comets Heritage Night, okay. And so here, so all those tags are useful. It tell, I'm trying to figure out what it's telling us. Well, so I'm glad to guess what's telling us that it's the Albany Devils, who's in the American Hockey League playing the Clinton comments at the Commons Heritage Night the Eastern Conference Ice Hockey. Oh, those are new. So click on mystery boxes. So not all of them have, okay. Special jerseys. Okay, now I'm getting to get it. Okay, so what Jessica is doing here, which is interesting, um, is she's sort of using the um, Twitter approach to tagging. If you think of all those as hashtags, she's got this picture and she's gonna hashtag it so that this picture will show up if you search for any of those things. I think. But I'll have, to, I'll have to ask her to, to write a little piece. And I think one of the things the assignment asked you to do was to write a little description. See if you can find a little description here. I looked for it but didn't see it. Um, yeah, I don't see none. Yeah, and she's got like, let's click on pregame warm-ups. Those, that must be a photo that she put in. Yeah, okay, so these are photos. So she's putting in photos or photo essays and tagging them as they're coming in. Um, one of the things that I think that we need to, that you need to do uh, is be, um, if you tag everything to everything, it doesn't differentiate one object from another. So one of the, the purposes of tagging is to differentiate objects so that you might come to them. There may be other reasons that I'm not seeing. Um, and so I don't want to, I have a fairly limited view of the world like everybody does, their own view, and, and I don't want to be close to some other alternative that I'm not understanding. So I'm going to ask Jessica to, to, to help us out a little bit and write a, um, write a, I'll write a response to her message in the group and ask her to sort of explain where she was headed. Um, and it might, so we'll play with that. Um, so let's look at, um, yeah, it's, I was going to suggest a way of getting through this, but I don't think I'm going to, I might play with this myself and, and it will take me a little while. So let's look at the other one. Um, there was, yep, you can close that. And let's look at Adrian's. And I want to look at the time. Yep, good time. Okay, so um, now this was interesting. Okay, so um, I realize that, you know, I didn't give you any notice about this, um, but that's fine. Um, so if you scroll, it looks like that she's, she's going to give you an overview. These are her images. Um, those look like a set of slides. Those are fine. Um, not sure what we're supposed to do with them yet. But, um, but I, of course, want to follow the white rabbit. So thank you, Adrian, for that invitation. And now we get to, okay, now we're into something, right? Um, so again, figuring out ways to sort of present what you've got is the challenge. So it looks like she's running five major tags. 
And those are the real, so, so linger over those and let's see how many things are there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five fandom objects, um, three hardware objects, uh, five information objects, one of which interestingly is state of the industry, which is this. Yep. Leaks, which is another top level, okay. Leaks is also tied to fandom, fandom and information. So they're cross-linked. And that cross-linking is tricky. You want to understand it. This is also linked. To, I think they're all linked to state of the industry. But, and let's look at software. Yeah, so everything's state of the industry is linked to each other. And, and that's – you want to understand that. I'm, I guess I always – I tend to do hierarchical tags, which is kind of funny because I'm really all about not hierarchy here. But the hierarchical tags help you sort of in creating a non-hierarchical structure. And I'm trying to understand the hierarchy. Um, we're going to move into a big investigation of that when we talk about hierarchy or sequentiality sort of in the next week or two. Um, so these things are going to give you avenues into them. So let's pick the third software, or not the third one, pick OS changes because that looked to me unique to software. Um, and yeah, this isn't tagged to anything else. And so here, our opportunities to go elsewhere are limited to just going to software. Correct. Okay. Um, and so that's, I don't know, do we want to have another navigational structure? Close this and go back up. And let's look at one of the leaks. And let's go to helpful or hurtful. So I don't want to navigate to another fandom information. And so this, so this is, becomes like an article, right? This is sort of a, this is a, of a piece. Um, and this is something, right? This is, this is her prime object. So what I think is missing from many of these is a sense that all of these objects need to have some tag to hold them together in case we want to find them. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's see if we, but, but maybe not. Let's search for them. So search for, um, have you ever used advanced search? No. Click on the advanced search button. It's a teeny little magnifying glass to the right of the search bar. There you go. Okay. Yep. And um, so let's search for, um, uh, let's search for tag. So you put it in a um, bracket. So open the bracket with ta uh, square bracket. Open bracket with tag, and then another just tag, and then the bracket. And let's search for fandom capital. Nope, don't close it. No, nope, don't close the tag though. Oh, all right. And now an open bracket. It's weird. And now fandom and close the bracket, and one more. Okay, those are all the things tagged to fandom. Now, inside that last bracket, because those first and last bracket really belong to the filter, not to the word tag. Let's add tag information to it. Did I just put information? Um, nope, you have to put the word tag and then information inside of brackets. Uh, capital I information, I think. Um, so that, those are the ones that have both. I can't remember how to do it for, to have that be an and. Um, so we'll have to click on filter expression. And there's probably a little um, example there. Um, yeah, filter notation syntax operators. So I will figure there, there's a way to, to build this filter. So go back to her, go back to hers. Um, and there's a way to, I was trying to get to a filter that would have all of her special words, all of the um, characters all of the different um, tags that she uses. Click on Design Right and search for filters because this has the whole built-in 
and writing filters. And um, no, that's mine. Click on his filters. Uh, filter operators, there it is. Or filter syntax, one of those. Where are we going? Um, then there's a list of tiddlers, all matches, filter operators, or filter syntax. Which one? One of them, I don't know. Um, yeah, it does, that looks pretty complicated. That doesn't look, I'm looking for the ones with examples. Try the syntax. Huh, no examples. Um, you can learn to write filters. Look, there's a link to you can learn to write filters without needing to understand this group of tiddlers. So obviously I'm in the wrong spot. In the big box there, there's a link that says, however, you can learn to write filters in the filter syntax tiddler. Oh, okay. Yep, there's a link there to learn to write filters. Oh, there it is. Yep. Um, that's the one I'm looking for. Um, so that would give you a list of all of them. It looks like you should just be able to string them together, just like I did. Yep. Doesn't look like you should need anything else between them. Go back to that, maybe if you put a space between them. What's the yellow? Jeremy about this. Put a space after the first, not there, before the first, before the second tag. Oh, that didn't, that made it. Put brackets around the tag groups. Yeah, put another one at the end. There we go, right? Yep. Yep, okay. So keep adding, so we've got fandom and leaks to go. Okay. No, I think we already did fandom. Oh, you're right. We've got leaks. And so this stuff you learn all the time on the fly. Oh, we're up to 10. And uh, software. Oh, no, yeah, it's an open. Yep. Capital S software. Okay, so now copy that whole filter and do a new tiddler and paste it, but paste it inside of, yeah, that's fine. And then at the, at, at the very end, we have to, we have to, we've got a filter, but we have to tell it to do something. You, can, you have a filter, you know it works, but what do you want this filter to do? So let's list the links that match this filter. So at the very beginning of this line, open with double angle brackets, because we're gonna build it into a macro, and the macro is called list hyphen links, space, and then you can say, well, this is a filter, so it's filter, colon, uh, it's a semi, and that's still a semi. Yeah, and put it inside quotes, no space. And then close it with quotes. All the way at the last end bracket? Yep, and close it with angle brackets. This one? Those are squares. Oh. I found the official name for that, and I forgot what it is. So let's look at the preview and see if that works. Yeah, okay, so these are all, and let's call this Adrian's special tiddlers. <laughs> because these are her, ob these are really her objects, so call it Adrian's objects. I don't know how to spell Adrian, so yeah, there you, you, you do. I think it's two ends. Two ends? Yeah. There you go, Adrian objects, yep. Yep, and so it would be nice to tag all of those with Adrian objects so that we could, we can get them. But now at least we know where, where they are. You can save this tiddler. Um, and so now we know what her objects are. And um, this allows us then to look at them all. Suppose that we wanted to um, treat them specially. 
So let's create a new tiddler and call it um, Adrian Template. I don't know if you've played with Template before, but we're going to spend a few minutes talking about Template here. Um, tem template, uh, template, P L A T E, Template. Yeah. And um, you have to tag it with, um, you should type the word view, Let's see if you'll find it. View, we're looking for view template, capital, lowercase v. Um, no, um, go back to design right and search my search for templates. But the one that I've been using, it's fast to find is four by four, four X four. Four X four. That's no, that's not it. Yeah, one of a pure template will work. Anything that's anything that's tagged, and the tag you want there is tags view template. It was a capital V. I was wrong. Go back to hers and see if you can get it with a capital V. V I E W. Yep. No, it's not coming up, is it? No. Okay. So anyway, I guess I don't know why. Um, but you can grab it from design, right? And it's, you want the, it's hard to get actually, not the, not the, not the tiddler, you just want the tag. Yeah, you want the text of that tag. It's hard to kind of get with your mouse. Yeah, you have to actually do that. It's, yeah, you can click on it, click on it. Yep, and go to it. Yeah, you can go navigate to it, go ahead. And now you can grab it. Okay, so what that does, anytime you tag a tiddler with that, okay. um, you want to go to hers. Yeah, wait for that. Oh. Yep, yep. Anytime you tag a tiddler with that, add, it's going to, um, it's going to act as a template, and it's going to say, hey, do my tiddlers match this one? So if you go back to design, right? Okay. And... Edit appear template. Um, yeah, and grab that first line and copy that. And go back to hers and paste that in. And so now it says, is the current tiddler, tiddler tagged with a peer template? But let's tag it instead of a peer template, let's tag it with Adrian template. You can, no, I'm sorry, grab the title of the tiddler. Yep, okay. and replace a peer template with Adrian template down in the actual code. There you go. Yep. There you go. And um, so now hit return after this line. And what do we want to have there? Let's put an HR inside of brackets, your favorite thing. And then um, I like to double check and like provide some debugging code, which you take out later. So write the word template colon space. And then let's transclude the title of this tiddler. So transclude, you hear transclude, you type double squiggly brackets. Those are angle brackets, yep. Double squiggly brackets. This tiddler exclamation points, two exclamation points. Nope, sorry. You need two exclamation points or bang, bang. There you go, and the field is called title, T-I-T-L-E. Capital T? Nope, all field names are lowercase, and close it with angle brackets, or squiggly square, nope. Yeah, the braces, there it is, and save the tiddler. Um, okay, and copy Adrian template, just the value of it, the, just the um, name, you know, the Adrian template you wanna, there you go, copy that, and let's tag description images to it. So click on description images and tag it with Adrian template. And save it and let's look at it. And so now at the very bottom of it, I hope, you see that it's, you're, getting some, you're getting information from the template. This is how you're gonna do the stuff you were talking about doing. Yep. Okay, so go back up to, now let's work on Adrian template, which you can grab right from the right and. Yep, and um, let's edit that. And underneath the title, in the line after the title, 
Yeah. Just and so what? Let's put the her four main words. So grab. Um, so we want to put tag fandom. You can grab them from the right list. So you can drag drag fandom over. Yep. And information or hardware was one. Well, we missed hardware. <laughs> um, information, I think, was one. I'm not sure. Leaks was another. And um, software. Yeah, unfortunately, they all come in as square brackets. We really want them to be tags. So now we're going to manually change all those square brackets to um, backspace. Hey, do you have do you have um, jump cut? No, not yet. Ah, it make life easier. It, let's make it right now. It'll take you a second to install it. Okay. Nothing like the present. Might want to save the tiddler just in case the world blows up. Okay. Oh, you're saving in Dropbox. You're not saving that. No, well, you didn't tell me to go to Dropbox. Yeah, click on commentary on video game development and do a file save as. Because this thing is not saving. No. Yeah. Um, yep, that's, yep, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, it's called Jump Cut. Uh, second one. Install, there's a download of 6.3. Yeah, um, yeah, 0.6.3 is right, yep. No, don't click that. That's fake. That's not what you want. It's starting. It's coming, isn't it? There it is. Yep. Yep, launch it. You'll have to you'll have to install it appropriately in your applications file and then click the start up on beginning. So now you got little scissors on top. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, so close that, go back to Adrian's thing, close all this stuff. Or whatever you want. You can just go back to hers. I don't care what you do. <laughs> um, there. So we were editing the template. And we were going to replace the double square brackets. Okay. So hot backspace over the at. And we're gonna replace it with angle bracket, angle bracket, and the word tag. Space. Now highlight that down to the other angle brackets. Oop, no, just that. Just the opening. Yes, yes. And the space. Here, yeah, copy that. Okay. Okay. And now go to the end of fandom. Okay. Um, replace. Get rid of those two angle brack. Those two square brackets. And replace it with two angle brackets. And highlight those two angle brackets. And copy them. Okay. Okay. Now go in front of hardware, and backspace, backspace. Go up to your little scissors. And grab the, there you go. Makes life easier. And when you figure out how to do it from the keyboard, mine is set up so that it's um, shift Apple V, and then I can arrow through my menu. Yours might be the same way, so let's do preferences. Let's do scissors preferences. Well, you're a mouse person, aren't you? Yes. Okay, then you're not gonna care about keyboard shortcuts, but there's a hot key. Um, what is that? Control, I can't, I can never understand what that, what is that, option? Control, option, V. I do shift Apple V, personally. All right. So, you, but that's how I do it. Anyway, keep going. You're almost there.
and the, that little um, yeah And so let's save that. Um, before you do that, oh, open it again. Put a BR after the title. Because you're kind of um, way up there on, yeah, you're kind of in the HTML land, so you have to break it. So it's a little weird to get the breaks, and I don't understand that. So that'll give it, it doesn't matter <laughs> where you put it. Okay, so let's look at her, um, one of her objects now. Do leaks. And scroll down, are they there? Oh, they're not. Oh, because it's not tagged with Adrian template. So tag it. Um, here you go. So that's kind of cool, right? Yeah. So, um, and if you wanted to put something else there, you know, how to navigate this, whatever. So that's like, that's a whole other aspect of Tiddly wiki we haven't explored yet, and I would argue it's a whole other aspect of hypertext. So we've got linking. We're not doing any transcluding yet in this tiddler. Nope. Um, we've done a lot of tagging, and now what we're doing is templating or templating. <laughs> we're running things through a through a specific set of design instructions. Okay. Um, and that's. Uh, quick way of demonstrating how you use templates. Um, if you, oh yeah, and we just did this in your Dropbox version. Yes. Hey, Jessica, your audios. So do me a favor because this is nice, save this back, yeah. Yep. And then you can share that back into the Tiddly Wiki in the form Okay. And write, you know, this is the workshop, edited version of the work of Adrian's wiki. Okay. Um, Jessica's here. Say hi. You don't want to unmute your mic? <laughs> Were you watching this video earlier? Well, we just went through your wiki, and I'm confused, so I was hoping you'd read it to me. But you have to unmute your mic so I can hear you. Or type in the chat if you don't have a mic. Hello. <laughs> Well, while Jessica's figuring this out, James, <laughs> oh, something's wrong with my mic. <laughs> I would never have guessed. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so you've saved this. Um, there's an audio test thing, Jessica. You probably got it on the wrong thing. So somewhere in um, Zoom is like a test my audio thing. And um, when we hear you, we'll know that you're there. <laughs> um, so if you chat, just wave your hand so I can see that you have something else to say in the chat. Um, so James, just open, um, open this in another window to make sure that it actually saved. Okay. Uh, that's gonna overwrite it, yeah. Yeah, however you wanna do it, I don't care. And um, recent, yeah, see, they didn't save, did they? No, but I can show you what to do. And so when this happens to me, and it's just so annoying, so just make this half screen, which is whatever, you know. You just, oh, no, you've got, come on, come on. You've got, like, um, there you go. You can go right up to the mouse up there. You don't have to remember the keyboard. Go up to the... Um, 
jump cut, there you go. And you can do it from the command line. Uh, what am I doing now? You're gonna go up to your size up icon and put it to the left. Yeah, and scroll up to the top and look at recent and drag over Adrian template. Yep, and drag over Adrian objects. Okay, and import them both. Um, and, oh, we changed, we changed description images too because we added a tag to it. Yep, and we changed something else. Didn't we add something else? Leaks. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so whenever I write in the Dropbox version by mistake, <laughs> I do that. <laughs> um, so click on leaks, let's make sure it's there. And Jessica, we could, yeah, it's there. So Jessica, we covered the idea of how you write a template for the stuff on the bottom. Um, James, do me a favor on the left, go to leaks. Yeah, or just do a refresh on the left. Do a sh uh, refresh on the left, right, and leave the page, yep. And go to leaks. I don't know where you're gonna find it. It's gonna be in there somewhere. It's down, under, keep going down. Yep, and so you can see the difference between the two leak tiddlers. One has the stuff on the bottom, um, which it's going to a template. That's not the name of the, oh, I, I told you the wrong thing. Click on Adrian template on the right, James. Yep. And go down and navigate to it. Not to Adrian template. Yep. And edit this. And we don't want it to say the title, we want it to say the words Adrian Template. So grab the name Adrian Template from the top, copy, and paste that there, not inside of angle brackets. Oh, sorry, next to it? Uh, yeah, get rid of title. The whole thing, the whole, everything with the braces as well, yep. Yeah. Because we want to create a link to the template, so save this. And now, if you look at, um, close that, and get back to leaks. Keep closing, we wanna get back to leaks. You'll get there soon. Yeah, and cl close everything so that you can see them right next to each other. So close the menu and the stuff above and all that crap, yeah. Yeah, and so now what you can see is the tiddler on the left is the one that Adrian made, the one on the right, the wiki on the right is the one that James and I just edited together and it's leaks is being pushed through, I don't want to say filtered, it's being templated by the tiddler called Adrian template. And the reason that it says that is because we wrote that into the Adrian template code. So any of you can do that, Jessica, you can do this as well. Um, all right, so thank you, James. Um, Jessica, I really want your mic to work. <laughs> oh, um, do you have a phone? You have a phone, you could call in at the same time with your phone number. And then we could talk to you and you could watch. Because I want to, I, I love your Utica Comets thing and it's cool, but I don't get it at all. So if you called on the phone, do you need the phone number? You do. James, you want to, let's take a break here. We can stop the, you, oh, you're going to edit this anyway, right? So yeah. you don't care. Um, Invite, copy invitation to the chat window. There's the phone number. Can you do that? She can. Yes. Um, I will be right back. Okay. Um, it's 8.05. I don't know what time you were going to go to, but I figured we'll go from like 8.10 to 8.30 with Jessica.
Is that good, Jessica? You're gonna be able to do that? Okay, I'll be right back in five minutes. Okay. I'm gonna mute my mic. Hey, Jessica, now talk. Okay. There. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy, right? I don't know what's going on with my computer. I know. Okay, so do me a favor and bring up your Utica comments and share your screen. Um, share your screen. You know what, and I don't have it up. Uh, hold on, I gotta find it. It's not your default home page? Um, no. But you can share your screen anyway, and let's see if we can, uh, you can go to design, right? Oh, but that's yeah, gonna be so your I'm top bringing up. mine up right now. Yeah, that's right. You you want to go to your regular version. Uh, okay, that's, I think I got it. That's the Dropbox. Where's your? Are you writing in Firefox? Or are you writing in Dropbox? Um, I'm writing in Firefox right now. I'm on two different computers. Okay, so does this computer have Firefox? It does uh, not right now. Okay. Um, okay. That's fine. Yeah, I have two. I have two computers, so if one's the everything's working on one and not on the other. Okay. Um. So this is Chrome, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you do a file save as? Um. Come on.
Safe page ads, there it is, more tools, good. And um, call it workshop. Put it in Dropbox, you've got Dropbox on this computer. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> it's right there under favorites. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, oh, but you don't have, it's not the same Dropbox, right? Right. I know. Well, it should be the same one because it showed my comments files. Oh, so did you put that in comments files? Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Here it is, workshop.html. Yep. Okay, that's weird. You've got Firefox, okay. But it probably doesn't have Tiddlyfox on it, right? so we're gonna have to install that. Is this the good computer or the bad computer? Well, they're both good computers. I'm just, right now, the, the audio, the web browser, everything is um, on my other computer. Okay, um, so I don't know what this is. Okay, and um, yeah, I didn't think that was gonna. Yeah, I get it. I'll tell you what, you stop sharing. I'll start sharing and you tell me how to read. How's that? Okay. Okay, so here I am. I'm in Chrome, um, you know, so I can, I mean, I make my changes and stuff. James, did we, are we recording again? I can't remember. I never stopped recording. Okay, so let's start recording. Yeah, it's, it's been recording the whole time. Okay, good. Okay, so it's on again, right? Okay, so here we're going to play with um, Jessica's, um, Jess, Jessica's wiki. Um, I... Typically, you want to start at home, right? Right. So, you kind of want to give me a place to go. Where do you want me to start? And even if it's just like um, about this wiki, that would be fine. It's got to be something to start with so I know what I'm seeing. And, and I should have made that a point in all the exercises. Um, so I'm going to create a new tiddler called About This Wiki. And um, hey, how, do you know how you got these code numbers to work this way? I didn't. I don't know how that. It just ended up popping in one when, when I was working on it. Okay, so you copied in some code from somewhere and it changed it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Okay, that's fine. You didn't do that on purpose. I wonder what you copied. Um, okay, so tell me the, the logic of this wiki. What am I, what, what is this about? Um, it's about pretty much uh, the breakdown of the game. It's the breakdown of the game. That's not what I wanted to do. What do you mean the breakdown of the game? Well, from warm up to first period, second period, third period, it's basically um, like highlight of, of, a, of a hockey game. So it's like, a, so you want to tell the story of a hockey game here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so like, do you want to tell step by step you want to tell it all sorts of different ways what are the what are the 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 what are like the themes of the narrative tell me tell me how's what's a hockey game it, it it's um i how do you i mean what do you mean like it's got teams right it's got players what else does it have um, period to play. 
um, intermission. Um, in some cases, overtime or a shootout. So that's part of a period, right? Okay, but yeah. Overtime. Shootout. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save this. And I'm going to create a new tiddler called Hockey Game. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to do a bunch of new here's. So the hockey game has teams. Is this a specific hockey game? This is, yeah, this was Saturday's hockey game. Who were the teams? Um, Utica Comets and Albany Devils. Do you want to overwrite the Tiddler Utica Comets? No, I really don't. <laughs> but what I can do is search for Utica Comets. Or search for comets. Did you mess with the colors? Yes. <laughs> you made them unreadable. And I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Huh? I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, I'm going to tag it to Teams and um, save it. And I'm going to go back to your um, control panel, appearance, and pick this theme, one of the default themes, so it's, sorry. Oh, how's that? That's better. We don't care, as long as it's readable. Okay, I tagged it to teams, okay. And, um, and there's, an, who was the other team? The Albany Firebirds or something, right? Devil. <laughs> I was close. And let's, I know you've got lots of tags, but let's add a tag here to teams. Okay. And um, so what else did we, oh, let's, um, let's put a table of contents here. So design, if you go to design right and you search for table of contents, you see me use them a lot. Um, but here's the macros. And so we want, let's do a TOC expandable. And you see, you see examples of it kind of sprinkled throughout the code for the class. And um, we're going to do TOC expandable for a hockey game. We'll close the code, show the preview. Okay. So you see how that does it? Yeah. I'm not a, a little hierarchy helps at some level, right? Okay. So, um, Okay, so we have teams. Tell me what else is in a hockey game. So I'm going to do another new here. A new here means it tags to the thing that it was that you've done a new here from. If you type the transcript of that sentence, it wouldn't make sense. Um, you said it, it has players, right? Right. Okay. Um, and you said it has periods. Let's just stop with that. Okay, so then I'm going to look at first period. Well, I should tag this to periods, right? Right. Okay, so I'm just going to edit it and tag it to periods. Um, okay, so, um, and so tell me about this tiddler. I'm going to, let's put all the focus just on this tiddler now. So I closed your menu, and now you can see. So tell me about this tiddler. Imagine that I'm your reader. I come here. What do I, what did you imagine as a writer that I would learn, know about, understand, or be able to do from here? Uh, as I'm looking at it, I wanted to say first period here, here's what happened based on um, the goals and penalties. So you've got so some. Almost, almost give like a breakdown of what happened in that period based, based on um, the game note. Okay. And have you written that stuff yet or not yet? That's all in there. 
That's in there. Okay. I thought so. So where is it? Um, it's first period, click on first period goals in, the, in that tiddler. First period goals. Okay. And first period, and so this is all, okay. So image or highlights, and then you filter everything based on first period. Right. Got it. Okay. Perfect. And is it tagged to first period? Um, yes. Well, so, not the first period itself, but the, the two um, pillars for that are tagged to first period. Okay. And so this is why I needed you, because I could not figure out what you were doing. Okay. And then these are the penalties in the first period, right? Right. Okay. Why did you tag first period penalties to Utica Commons? Um, because this is the team. I tagged everything to the two teams that were involved in the game. Okay. With what were you thinking? I might do with that. So, as a reader. Um. Well, when you click on it, it gives you everything unique to the comment. Okay, and what does this do? Um, American Hockey League is actually the team, the two teams belong to this particular league, league, so I tagged the league as well. Okay, are there things that are tagged to American Hockey League that are not tagged to Utica Comets? Um, not everything is. Like, like Save of the Day Foundation is not, because that's the... Um, foundation specific for the comment. Okay. So what I'm, okay. All right. Um, I think that what I'm finding is a little complex is that Things should be tagged American Hockey League that belong to the American Hockey League. So I don't think the first period belongs to the American Hockey League. I think the first period belongs to the game. I'm not sure. I think first period goals belongs to the first period, but not necessarily to American Hockey League. And the game notes belongs to the game. The overtime belongs probably to the period. So you could approach it by providing some level of hierarchy. Um, your approach is very different, which is to say he, everything is tagged to sort of everything, um, which allows you for maximum, right? You can navigate to anywhere from anything. Um, but I'm not sure that your tags are adding value. So that's, that's sort of my question is what you, you want to think when you're tagging, you don't want, you want to tag for a reason and you want it to add some level of value to your readers. You want them to see that there's a difference between Utica Comets and American Hockey League. Um, and the difference is pretty subtle and maybe that's. No, the reason why I tagged it to American Hockey League is because it's an American Hockey League hot game. Right. So your tags flow through. Um, let me save this. Your, your tags, so let me go to American. So that's sort of like the, this one. Um, I lost it. American Hockey League, American Hockey League, and tools close others. Okay, so we're looking just, and there's nothing written about American Hockey League, right? Right. So you know. I thought I put a Tiddler in there. What's that? I thought I put one in there. But that's fine. It's that, 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 yeah. Okay, do you have Tagly? Um, no. 
Okay, so do you know what I mean by when I said you have Tagly? So here, um, oh, this is my screen. I'm driving, I forgot. So I'm gonna move this to another, to a um, new tab. How do I move this to a new window? I'm not on my computer, so I'm not, oh, and that doesn't have any of my toys in it. Like, things I just made James install. <laughs> um, so if I search for Tagly and Design Right, are you seeing both of them now? Yeah. So if you see this, you can just drag and drop it over. So now you have the ability to, and then import it. Well, that didn't work. Usually it works, let's see. Yeah, so this is a macro that does this. Lists the links of this tiddler. Um, and now, because it's a macro, you can use it anywhere you want um, by typing tagly. So this is gonna tell me all the things that are tagged to American Hockey League. Um, and if I replace it with TOC hyphen expandable, And this you've seen a lot of the TOCs in the course wiki as well. Um, so now you can see all the things that are tagged to American Hockey League and all the things that are tagged to the things that are tagged to American Hockey League. Um, so this is a strategy of tagging, um, which some people really like and some people find um, confusing. Um, so I'm primarily interested in you understanding the difference between them and purposefully choosing them um, for like a reason that's strategic for your readers. Okay, so I, so this, if we keep going, right, so this is only going to go down so many levels. Um, so these tags, 1 through 16, is that how many you've got? I'm oh, sorry, one through 20, you want someone to like have a logical reason for navigating through this path, that it might take them somewhere. So they're gonna keep going through and clicking, you know, I, I'm, trying, well, I, I'm trying to get a sense of your idea here. Um, you were putting a lot of stuff in and sort of seeing where it falls out. Is that what you were, did you have a plan? Um, I started with, there was a lot going on in this game because it was a really special game. Um, so I started out with like the back history of the teams and a lot of the tag, um, the links for that. And then I started and then went into the game. So that's how I went with it. Okay, uh, now I'm beginning to get a feel for it. Because I didn't want to go completely cold with just starting with yes. the, the, uh, the pre-game warm-ups and then first period, second period, third period without giving people an understanding of who the teams are and who they are, who they are and where they belong. Okay, so I need the second period. Now I'm beginning to get it. Okay, this is now. It's just, now I got it. I'm, part of what I should have asked you all to do was provide this explanation, and I'm thinking that what I should do is have people record their own videos to explain. Um, there's probably a third period, right? Yeah. Um, oh, there it is. I'm going to be able to get to it this way. Was there an overtime? Yes. Oh, how exciting. Was it a good game? Um, really good game. Cool. Oh. And um, 
overtime, right? Where's, where am I going to find a link to overtime? Overtime. Overtime. What was three on three? Is that the only overtime there was? Yeah. Okay. So now if we go to periods and um, we're going to do that TOC expandable again to sort of get a sense of what we've got. So now Okay, so and there's nothing under there, right? Right. Okay. Um, so this becomes the narrative of your game in some respects, right? Right. And it is in the first period, is there any, there's no narrative, do you have any um, text description of it anywhere? Click on first period goals, there's description. Okay, so that's what, so yeah, so that you get some text in there. So. I'm going to go back to periods again and show you how we might think if you were writing, say, for a newspaper. Not that you would ever do that in your whole life. <laughs> um, so if, instead of linking to it, if I transclude it, so here I can link to it. And I'm going to put a break in between just to um, make it kind of clear what's happening. Um, so that gives us the first period. So then we have to go to first period and edit that. And I'm going to put it above you. I'll put it below your picture because that's your style here. Um, we want to, let's transclude first period goals. And let's put a link to it as well. So that's going to make you do this. <laughs> so we're just through the first period, right? So that's the first period. And we want the same thing for the uh, penalties, right? Um, yes. Just say yes. <laughs> sure. you're, you're skeptical. Is it penalties? Am I spelling it right? think so yeah okay so that's the first period um, let's save that let's close that close that in fact let's go up to periods close that close that that and now let's close all the others and let's, um, let's get rid of the table of contents. And I think that's okay. Okay, so there's gonna be some problems with it, but I'm gonna, um, but we'll get the general idea. Um, so what do you think you're gonna see? We're seeing here, Everything that was in your first period, right? And right. then everything in first period goals, and then everything in first period penalties. Okay? So what we've done is we've, and if you continued this for the third period, right, then you could, um, 
that's all the code you write for the, your whole game code is gonna say, you're not even really gonna have these links. So you're really gonna have Oh, and yours had an overtime too. So really what you do is you just, your whole period becomes the game. This becomes your game. This is how you tell the story of your game through those tiddlers. Okay. And then let's see, we'll go to first period goals. Um, and let's edit this. And so here you've got your links, right? So these are perfect because now you can show them. You with me there? You dropped out, right? You're gonna, I'll wait for you. You're gonna call back. Okay. Um, I'm going to record this. I'm going to keep chatting a little bit. Um, you're not hearing it, but um, this is a, now that I understand it, I've got a much better feel for what you're trying to do. And um, I'll mess around with this. I'm going to show you right here. What I'm going to suggest you do is you make this a, um, It's fine for what you will leave it now and I'll show you sort of in the next round what you might do with that. Um, so, so just there, you're back, okay? You're back? Yeah. Good, okay. So do you see what that, do you see how that sort of begins to use your, your the interactivity or the hypertextuality of your text in a logical way that kind of builds on your tags? Yeah. So I, does that, okay, so I think, so if that makes sense, then that would be, that's cool. You might do that just for this game. You know, do the second and third period, and then that will kind of fill your exercise up. Um, I wanted to chat with you about your, your, your um, Twitter work as well. Have you been playing right. with it at Yeah. Um, are you collecting tweets? I am. I have so many to go through. <laughs> Where are you collecting them and how? Um, I'm doing it through that spreadsheet way. Okay. So did you do like, just take a day. Don't worry about, don't let them pile up. Just like say, I'm going to do a day and, and go through them. You know, um, do you have a, do you have a spreadsheet handy that you could share? I do. Okay. Oh, it's getting eight forty. So I got about five minutes if you still have some time. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. I think you're still sharing your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you finding this tiddly stuff at all interesting? Um, a little bit. It's, <laughs> it's, right now I'm trying to balance between figuring all that out plus my thesis and um, I just bought a house so I'm kind of a little... You bought a house? Yeah. Uh, very exciting. Um, your thesis and your Tiddly Wiki could merge very nicely, by the way. I would love, I'd love to be able to do it something with like graphic design wise, kind of like what I did for Webster. I don't remember what you did there. I did more like magazine -y type, um, a magazine type write out. Okay, but you wanted to talk about Twitter, right? Right. Yeah, so I was thinking for the analysis piece. But do you want to present the tweets or just sort of like talk about them? Um, I would say talk about them. Okay. Um, um, yeah, this is what I have so far. This is just from the at Utica Comet. So, and, and how, how are you writing these? 
Um, I've been trying to look for the kind of, like commonalities, what what they're doing as far how, as how are you getting these in here? Um, I'm using that ISTT. Okay. So whenever Utica comment Utica comments comments tweet, you get the text and the link. Yeah. Were there other fields available to you in that recipe? Um, I hit the other field. It was a lot. It was just all the HTML code. Um, there should have been a timestamp. Um, I didn't have that. There's got to be a timestamp. Um, a lot of them are game are just game tweets, so I know which game it is. Yeah, you do, but your data file doesn't. So, um, can I do you have your recipe? Um, not up here. I don't. So you can just go to if.com and log in. Ifttt.com. Because I think you need another field in your recipe. Uh oh. Oh. I know. That's why I said, uh-oh. Oh, I oh, can't remember my password. Of course not. Right. I know. I never can either. Oh. Um. Yeah, I can't remember my password. Okay. Um. So just do browse recipes. Or, or... Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it'll let you sign in, I suppose. Um, um, here, I'll... Um, um, oh, you can't do... You, I don't even think you can browse them because you're not signed in. You can't read... Look, can you click on them? So what are you doing? Twitter? Search for... Tw yeah, search for Twitter. Does it, um, yeah, it's gonna want you to sign. Here, let me, let me, uh, give me the screen. Because I think that you, you're gonna be, um, another piece of data. Um, now we'll see if I remember my password. Ooh, it, I do. So you want to do if Twitter. Um, and what is it? You're doing a new tweet by someone, right? Yeah, by a specific user. Yeah. Um, I think that's me. Then that, and you're doing sheets, right? Yeah. Drive, is it Drive? Google Drive. Um, append to a document. Yeah, you need this created at field. And I actually have that field in there. I don't know why it's not showing up. Okay. Um, that's weird. Yeah, I thought it. I thought it would have the created at. What else does it have? Yeah. So you you might as well get everything, including the embed code. Okay. Um, yeah, instead of doing the default, and then just, um, I'm going to stop my share, and then we'll go back and look at your screen for a minute. Um, what I was going to, what do I do? Stop my share. One of the things that you could do um, is you could, 
you could categorize these, right? Right. And one of the ways that we've been categorizing is you could do it in a spreadsheet or you could do it in TiddlyWiki. Um, if you do it in TiddlyWiki, then you create a navigation amongst your tweets. So then you would be able to navigate from the positive to the negative tweets or the what, you know, whatever those things would be, you know, if you're interested in that. Or you could just create columns here. Okay. Um, so like if you're going to create a column here, you might create a column and once you do it, it's a little tricky, you know, so you have to um, create a new sheet, do an insert sheet. So I'll show you how you can work with this here. So insert sheet. Um, yeah. Okay. Then in A1, um, do equals and click the sheet one. Click, um, yeah, and you should have, did you type sheet one? No, click to sheet one. Go, you can do it from A2, that's actually better. A2 is right, not A1, I was wrong. So wait, what am I doing? Yeah, go to A2, it's really on line A2. And we'll click on sheet, yeah, just type the equal sign and click on sheet one. Uh, you're not in the formula. Um, do you know how to write a reference to a cell? There, yeah. And click on sheet, backspace over that. <laughs> um, try B2, we'll, we'll go, go fresh. Hit escape, hit escape. Yeah, now type equals. Click on sheet one in the lower left. Click on it and hit return. Yeah. Hit. No, it may be up arrow, down arrow. Yeah, not getting anything. All right, so it's equal to sheet two exclamation point B2. So click back in sheet two, hit escape. Hit escape again. And I'll type equals sheet one, B2, uh, exclamation point B2. There you go, hit return. What the hell? Um, there you go. Okay, so you can wrap that text if you want. Okay. Uh, highlighting B and click on text wrap, highlighting the whole column. There you go, yeah. And then there's a text wrap button up in the toolbar. Um, uh, yeah, it's that one. No, no, over more, there, that one. Do a pull down and wrap text on that. There you go. Okay, so then, so B1 is, that's the text of the tweet. So in B1, write text. And in B2, BC2, I'm sorry, C1, um, let's write emotion. What am I writing? Emotion. We'll just code it for emotion. Okay. So then you can grab B2 and copy that down to like line 20. You know, grab, copy cell B2 to, to B3 to B20. And now you might go and label this or code this or analyze this in terms of emotion. So C2, what would you call that? What would, how would you describe that? I don't know, what were you trying to figure out from the Twitter? It wasn't really emotions. Re remind me again what your question was. I was gonna look at the hashtag. The hashtags. And C, okay. So in C2, C1 called hashtags. And you, what do you want to do? You want to extract the hashtags from there? Um, yeah. I think your if recipe will give you the tags, won't it, or it won't? I don't. I didn't um, see it. The tags. Well, the hashtags, right? 
right there. It's hashtag ALB versus UTI. Right. But you don't want to do this manually, do you? Um, I mean, it's a lot easier if the hashtag is in the tweet. It's a lot easier. What do you want to do with these hashtags? I'm trying to find the commonality between their in-game versus their uh, their team Twitter account. What do you mean the commonality? Um, like how they differ and how the, how they're the same because they are not the, they're well they're kind of the same but they're kind of different because one is more um, the comments in game is more um, in depth play-by-play uh, -play coverage versus the Utica comments one it they cover the games but they are not covered as in depth so it's more of the quick hit because fans will. Um, Based on my experience doing the internship, fans, some fans follow one over the other. Uh huh. And there are different um, styles of how they do it. So the Thomas one is more, more quick. It's tweet after tweet after tweet. It doesn't matter if it's a goal, if it, even if it's a hit or whatever it is. Um, they they document it. Whereas the uh, at you can Thomas one, it's more for the fans who don't want all of the in-depth coverage. And you want to describe that as a story? You want to tell us that story? Um, I think so. Okay, I get that. So after I read your thesis, I'll understand the difference between these two Twitter accounts. And you want to describe these two Twitter accounts, these two right. Twitter as different. And you want to say descriptively, here's the difference. And then here's an example of how these differed. Here's one, um, one account's tweets for one day when there was a game. And here's the other account's tweets for one day when there was a game. So how would they... Right. How many tags? The comments game is more focused on the game, whereas their other account, it has, yes, it has their game day coverage, but it also covers, like, their community events, their, um, when they have transactions, when um, more of all of their other news as well. Do they overlap at all? Do they ever have the same tweets? The, um, I went, the ones I looked at just from this past game, um, they covered, they, I'm going to guess they have two different interns um, running both Twitter accounts, but they're written completely different. Um, even the hashtags are reversed, um, especially when it's a hashtag ALB versus UTI, it should actually be the other way around. Um, so it's, there's two different styles of how they're covering the game. How many tweets are there in a game? How many tweets were there last time? It depends on the game. There were a lot in this one because it was a pretty extensive game. What's a lot? Um, I can tell you there's probably a good, good 50 tweets just in the in-game one. Okay, we definitely need the time because that's going to be important, like how often they tweet it, right? So you definitely need the time. Um, these are all comments in game? This one is, yes. Okay. Um, You want to make, like, when you said it, I'm going to go back to your deliverable, okay? So I'm, we're bouncing around between your sort of your question, what you want to ask questions about, and how you want to present your answers. 
Right. So the way you want to present your answers is you want to do some graphical treatment of this data, sort of an infographic kind of thing, right? Yeah. Okay. And so what we need to do is figure out a way for you to gather a bunch of raw tweets as your raw data and make that and draw conclusions from it that would become your infographic. Right. Okay. Uh, which I know. Um, it's... Um, there's a couple of things that you could learn. Um, so for example, go back to sheet two. And I don't remember how to do this, but like up in C2, type equals, um, try POS for position. POS, um, open parentheses. Does it give you any help? Oh, it doesn't. Um, see on the function in the toolbar, um, the Google, Google Sheets toolbar, all the way to the far right, there's that little something. That means function for some reason. So do a pull down on that, do more functions. And these are all the functions that you can do in Google Sheets. So we're looking for a um, position or a search or find maybe. And pretty much anything that you'd want to do, you can do. Yeah, let's search the text for a string. So find, okay, yeah, search, that's good. Copy that and paste that. Probably, yeah. So search for, you're searching for the hashtag. And you have to put it in quotes so they don't tell you. <laughs> and then the text to search for, Replace that with B2, this name of the cell, and backspace, not in quotes, backspace so you get rid of the extra space after the comma. Yeah. And then starting at, let's start that at zero. Okay. Yep, return. So that didn't work. Um, so let's go back and edit that again. Um, Find parameter three value of zero should be, oh, should be one. <laughs> I think it has to start at space one. Yeah, so that means that at position 90, it encountered a hashtag. Okay. And so, um, hmm, okay, and then copy that formula. Well, this is just a little bit of, copy that to top to D and just want to give you an idea of what's possible. So hit pay, paste it there. And now looking at that formula in D2, instead of looking for the, instead of starting at, um, see where you've got uh, um, the very end of the formula, instead of starting at 90, at B, at period space one, start at the value of C2. So wait, am I leaving the one? No, no, replace the one. No, no, replace that one with C2, cell C2, which is actually a 90, right? Right. And now you're not searching for the um, hashtag. You're search searching for a space. So you want to find the first space after the hashtag. Okay, hit return. Okay, so now in E... You want to, um, I think it's called a string. So do the function search for a string. Um, I think it's called string um, dollar concatenate. I think it's one of the, keep going down. It's not join. Wait, wait, go up to left. Maybe it's left. What does left do? Yeah, string number of characters. Um, Return a substring from the beginning of the specified string. It's not left. It um, returns the length of the string. It's like length, mid, mid. There it is. Segment of a string starting at exact length. Okay. So what's the string? The string is B2. 
And where do you start at? Uh, C2. And how long is it? It's D2 minus C2. Minus D2? Yeah, it's 99 minus 90. It might be plus one. I can never remember. <laughs> Hit return. Oh, it worked. Do you see what you did? Yeah. So you've extracted the first hashtag. Now, that's interesting. That's like a way to automate this process. You're not going to want to, because that took a while, but now that you do it, you can copy those three down, and you'll get the first hashtag for every, um, every tweet. Um, copy those three formulas down, C, D, and E, and then I have to run, because I think we'll be done. But this will give you some ideas of how you might build out a um, – a um, infographics. So copy C, D, and E on line two. All the way down. Yeah, copy that all the way down to the rest of your spreadsheet. Okay, so some of them don't have any hashtags, <laughs> right? Um, they should. Um, yeah, some of them don't. Yeah, oh, but it should be picking up all the, the hashtags. Yeah, the okay. That's because it's the tweet is ending in a hashtag. Okay. I mean, the tweet is, yeah, ending, so it doesn't end with a space. So we'd have to fix that. That's data cleaning. But ultimately, you get all these hashtags. So that would be a um, – that's an idea if you want to do that kind of analysis. I kind of think sometimes you don't, though. <laughs> I, I'm kind of confused on what the numbers mean. Well, what you were trying to do, you said you wanted to know what the hashtags were. Right. If you've got three or 400 tweets, I don't want you to have to look at each one of them and figure out what the hashtag is. So what we did there is we, we taught Google Sheets to extract the first hashtag from the tweet. Okay. Um, and... Once you come up with the idea of, oh, I would like to extract the first hashtag from a tweet, or I'd like to have a list of all the hashtags in that tweet, I can help you figure out how to do that. But you have to come up with, well, this is what I want. This is what I want to use to measure. That's what you need to come up with. But I wanted to show you the kinds of things you could do if you want to parse the actual text of the tweet. That's your data. So if you want to learn something about Twitter and how the two different Twitter accounts are different, you want to do some analysis of them. You could count the tweets. That's okay. <laughs> you could talk about how many there were per minute during a game. That's okay. And that's, but if you want to actually talk about, like, did they use different hashtags? Did they, were they have different lengths? Did they talk about different things? Then you want to do some analysis of the actual tweet itself. You don't need to, but I just wanted to give you that as an, op as an option. Because you've talked about doing some, I mean, when you're doing like an analysis, like a Twitter analysis, it's sort of a quantitative piece, right? Right. It's based on some quantity of data, and you certainly, you don't want to be doing this by hand. So I was teaching you a little bit of analysis skills. The value of doing this is that you'd learn along the way, you'd learn some, you'd learn some of these functions in Google Spreadsheet, which will make, it will make you a, a, a better person with better values, um, a better citizen of the world. You're supposed to be laughing now. <laughs> there it's not no but it would give you a different set of skills um and maybe you know i don't know if it would be helpful or not i think it's helpful to be to know your way around a spreadsheet when you do graphic design you know because like suppose that you got a list of images from one directory and you had to create a whole new set of links for them but only one thing changed you could use this technique to just make a whole new set of images instead of doing it one by one by one by one right you know, um, so if you want to, if you want to do this, if you want to kind of get into a spreadsheet analysis, then your thesis project becomes developing a tool in Google Sheets that will allow you to analyze tweets for things, hashtags, other kinds of things, characteristics. You're going to keep them in Google Sheet. You're going to collect them in a sheet from if. You're going to do some analysis in the sheet. We're going to build some formulas that will kind of give you some stuff, and then you'll use. The next step I'd show you where you can teach yourself how to do pivot tables, 
which will then tell you how many there are of each different kind. Okay. And then from there, that will help you design your infographics. That'll be the data on which your infographics are based. And mine will be like numbers based more than. Well, they it'll be like like be like a graphic, um, even just like a. I don't, I'm just throwing out things here, like a bar chart, how many times they use the hat, a specific hashtag in a game. It could be, yes, exactly. It could be, right, how many times, how many different players did they reference? You know, you'll have to see, you know, you'll have to sort of, you'll, you'll feel your way into that. But you'll begin to ask questions. And the nice thing about this approach is once you get your tweets there, and even before you get them, you can teach yourself to ask different questions. Like, but, and it's funny too because I mean I did the internship and I actually ran Twitter last season. Um, and one thing that obviously I had a question about from the get go is you have all these players that are mentioned in these tweets and yet they're not referenced right. um, by their by their own Twitter account. Correct. Um, let me show you. How, go to line B six. Um, okay, that's actually calling you from sheet 1B6. Um, we're going to cheat. <laughs> um, if you edit, um, oh, this is going to be hard to do. Um, you want me to go to the other one? Yeah. We're going to cheat. Edit B6. Put a space at the very end of that tweet. <laughs> you, have to go up, you have to go up higher into the edit bar. No, nope, you didn't get it. Right there. You have to go, yeah, click up there. Let's hit space. It looks like it has a space. Hit, put another space. Put a space in. Oh, okay, good. And did it? Yeah. It yeah. That's like, that's pretty lame. <laughs> we can make a better formula than that, but that's like a quick way to, to fix those things. Um, so that's like a, that's, that's a decent, um, Strategy. Um, so, did, did, would you want to talk about how to make the account better? Um, I would say no because it seems like I mean they've only been there for three seasons, and I mean I've had the experience of being a part of the the internships and. Um, it seems like it's a different style every um, game. Like I, I think having the two Twitter accounts is fantastic, but I think too that I, I, it's hard to it's really hard to tell because it's it's hard to follow one. I only follow personally. I only follow one myself because it's a lot of um, redundancy. Okay, um, so. I'm still a little unclear as to what your question is. Well, I'm trying to, I want to analyze how, how the, it's supposed to be sports fans in the web 2.0. And I wanted to use the comments because I mean, they're local and they're popular, but I wanted to look at how they're, the fans are, um, the, how they're, the comments Twitter accounts are helping the fans. Okay. Um, so what if you, um, so put over in column A, because we don't have anything in column A. Um, so like, what was your question? How does this help the fan? Well, like, I, I want to know how the fan has changed. Why, how has Twitter made um, the, the sports fan change? Okay. How do you think it's changed? Um, I honestly, I think it, it's a lot, has a lot to do with, um, you know, it's now quick hits, play by play, like they can get it on the fly. Um, 
you can just open up Twitter and see the 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 tweets as they come in and if you're not at the game it's a and you don't have your radio, it's a great way to find to follow the game and quickly. It's like you're it's almost like you're at the game but you're not at the game. <gasps> We have new baby goats at my house. <laughs> um, oh, cool. She didn't call me for the birth. Um, How could you, how could you convey that, that story, like graphically? How could you tell that story? Well, I kind of wanted to do it. To, that's why I wanted to measure these tweets. Okay, so do a new sheet. Insert new sheet. And I'm going to... I'll share this with me when you're done, okay? Because I, I got to go because I got to go see my new baby goats. But I'll get you started here. So what if you just wrote in column A, like, I don't know, and then going straight down, like five or ten questions that you would ask about the Twitter account during a game. So what would you start with? How many tweets? Uh, well, how, I mean, what do you mean, like, it's like, well, why? In fact, put this in column B. Do you ever see, um, put this over in column B. Like, so write how many tweets? And then oh, the next would be what? Like how many hashtags or most popular hashtag? Oh, over, I'm sorry, down in B2. Um, what else? I would say um, frequency of players. Okay. What do you mean, like, how many tweets mention players? Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't know if you want like specific hashtags or would that be I, what, what was the question? Like, I don't know if this would be a question or not. I mean, it says how many hashtags, but um, uh, specific hashtags, like hashtag comments or hashtag let's go comments, the, their most popular ones. Okay, so put most popular hashtag, second most popular, third most popular hashtag, you know. Um, I would say also Second graphics. Most popular. Okay. So what I'm thinking is that you might develop this list going down to like maybe to line 20 or so. Mm-hmm. As many things as you can think of and then answer those questions in column A for a game. Like put okay. the answer to the questions, you know, and then Maybe you'll have a bunch of games, and then that will, once you figure out what those questions are, then you'll know what you're looking for. So it'll be like a hard number, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's kind of annoying to gather the data the first time, but you can do it by hand, and then we can teach you how to machine code each game, and then we'll do that for like 10 games. Does okay. that sort of make sense? Is, I, I was hoping to do the whole month of February. That was my um, goal because they play the most games in February. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, have you and you're collecting every day? Yeah. Okay. The most in February or March? Um, I want to concentrate in February because I'd like to be able to 
to like okay, gather that's fine. Yeah. and because I'm, I'm graduating in May. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you've got a bunch of files already, right? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. You have to go make I, sure that you're. Should I cut What's it off? What's that? Should I cut it off and not do the whole month? No, no, no. There's no problem. You can always cut it off later. Don't stop it. But just make sure that you're getting the date and the time of the tweet. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, see if you can. So, you know, write as many questions as you can imagine would be interesting. Don't go more than 20, something more okay. than eight. And then answer them for, one, for two different games. Okay. And make that a chart, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I lost your phone, but I'm going to go now. <laughs> I don't think I don't. I think you're still hearing me, but your phone cut out, so I have to run. Um, James, thank you very much for recording. Not a problem. And um, I will catch you later. Okay, catch you later. Yep. Okay, I got to take off. See you, Jessica. Sorry about that.